let me get to you. How's everybody today? Look, you know, I think this is a really important game for us. Uh, this is a division game. Division games are like playing, you know, two games because if you lose one, the other team's got to lose two for you to catch up to them or get ahead of them. So uh, this is really an important game. Obviously, uh, you know, this is a team that um, two out of the last three times we played uh, has gotten the best of us. Um, I think the ultimate disrespect sometimes is when somebody quietly thinks, you know, they got your number, and our players need to understand that. And obviously, you know, do a great job of preparing for a totally different type of game uh, this week than, you know, what we played a week ago. So a lot of spread out stuff. Um, you know, going to be a lot of space plays, and you know, really going to have to do a good job on both sides of the ball, keeping the ball away from them, and doing a good job of playing defense. And they're really good at getting explosive plays. So we're looking forward to a tremendous environment in Bryant Denny Stadium. I think this is something that could really help us. Um, you know, they're a no huddle team, so a silent count could be an advantage for us. Um, might, might might help our defensive players a little bit. Might be a tough thing for them to execute quite as well. So uh, we really look forward to it. This is the 10th straight year that we've participated in the Coach Secure um, to support MS. Um, we're happy to do it and uh, certainly like to do anything that we can to benefit people who are less fortunate than us. But I don't have a lot to say today. Um, so I guess this would really be a good day for you all to ask some good questions. <laughs> so you think we got a, any, any chance? <laughs> any chance at all? All right, now, uh, if I don't start laughing here, I'm going to get killed on Sports Center or someplace. <laughs> We're going to, first participant here is Chandler. Uh, the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saturday we saw both Trayvon and Henry fielding punts during the game. Trayvon obviously had them up in the first half. What, what are you going to do with that position going forward? Well, Trayvon has been the most consistent guy we have fielding the ball. And uh, we have a lot of confidence in Henry Ruggs. He's a great returner. He's very explosive. Uh, we've been trying to get him in the game for the last two games so he could get some experience in the game fielding the ball. And then we get the game and we don't have an opportunity to put him in the game. We didn't have an opportunity in the Colorado State game because we never got him stopped on defense. And we kept the ball for, you know, a bunch of time, you know, in this last game and never had, you know, that many, but he did get a couple. So uh, we're, we're not looking to make a change there. We have confidence in both players. Um, these people that rugby punt, you know, it's a completely different uh, kind of ball to catch. Uh, the judgment, the experience, the line drives, the ball hitting the ground, when can you play it on a hop, when can't you play it on a hop. Uh, so we've been playing against those rugby punters every week, which we will again this week uh, for the most part. Uh, so we kind of like the experience that uh, Trayvon has having been back there and having done that. Uh, but we're going to continue to try to get Rugs as much experience as we can at that position. I'm on the left side of Ryder. What kind of, what kind of contributions has uh, Dan Werger made behind the scenes? Uh, Dan is a really good coach, and he's been very, very helpful in doing self-scout on the things that we do on offense and uh, also making contributions every week <coughs> to uh, some things that will complement some of the things that we do. Uh, and I think it's been very, very beneficial to uh, helping us sort of have a little more of an NFL flavor in terms of some of the passing game, but also being able to do some of the things that Jalen is pretty good at from a spread standpoint. And uh, I think um, I think he's been very, very helpful in the planning of some of the things that we've done on offense. Back up front here with Mark. Yeah, just what do you see from uh, Shea Patterson and their offense? And what, what makes him such a dynamic player? Well, I mean, first of all, the guy's got great arm talent. He's very instinctive. Uh, he's a very good athlete. He can scramble and extend plays, which they've made a lot of big plays uh, on that part of it. Um, and, you know, their offensive system and scheme uh, is very spread oriented. There's a lot of RPOs with a lot of running plays. So uh, he understands it really well. He reads it really well and uh, gets the ball out of his hand very quickly uh, on some of those things. So. Uh, the combination of all those things make it very difficult to, I mean, just about every running play has a pass with it. So uh, you teach players to read, run, pass, but now 
it's a run, but it's a pass. So uh, it creates a lot of run-pass conflicts on defense, and defensive players have to really do a good job of being disciplined in how they play those plays. And when they haven't played them correctly, um, you know, Shea's certainly taken advantage of it, and the guys played extremely well, uh, I think, in all three games. Back to Cecil. This is challenging. Um, has Miller Forrestal had his surgery? Are they going to wait on that? And with him out, how did the, the tight ends play, particularly Smith and Hinches? Right. Just well, you know, Miller is a good player for us. He really satisfied a really good niche because of his athleticism and his receiving ability, and we'll certainly miss him. Um, his surgery is, you know, scheduled and ready to go, so it's inevitable that he has to get it, and we'll get it. And uh, I have not seen him, uh, so I can't comment on how it went. But um, the other guys are certainly freshmen that have a lot of ability, and they made very nice progress. And it was nice to give them get them both an opportunity to play in a game some last week. Um, we've also worked Ronnie Clark a little bit at age back now, so um, he may play some in that in that role as well. But uh, it does make us relatively thin at the position, but we are pleased with the progress the freshmen have made. Come here in the middle with Michael. The last two games you guys played with them went four plus hours. How exhausting, I guess, were those games, and how much does conditioning come into it? Well, I think conditioning is a big part of it, and uh, they, they, they they seem like uh, they go fast at times. Maybe not as fast as what they were before. Uh, they have a pretty high play count. Uh, I think the key to it is, you know, you got to keep the ball on offense some. Uh, but you also got to get your stops on defense when you get off the field and don't let them extend drives because when they get those 10, 12 play drives and they're going fast, uh, that's when your players really get wore out. And if they're not subbing people, it's difficult to sub people. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge challenge, huge challenge to um, be able to keep enough people in the game to stay fresh. And that's where I think when you play these kind of Games depth is really, really important. How much guys play on special teams that have to play on defense is really, really important. So uh, the depth of your team all the way around affects special teams. It affects offense, defense. So uh, conditioning is a, is a huge factor. Um, but having enough depth to try to keep enough players rolled in there is also a huge factor as well. Okay, we'll come here with Alex. You've obviously expanded. Uh the secondary packages the last several years, a lot more nickel dime. We talked about that in the late. How much, the, what's the challenge when you got a uh, quarterback like Shea uh, that throws the ball so much that he does, you know, not to be a tag or, or get out of their lanes in that, that formation? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, <coughs> the extending plays. Um, you know, one of the hardest things in playing defense is when a quarterback extends plays. Uh, maybe you match the pattern. Right, but then, you know, it becomes a scramble drill, and you know, there's it's impossible to have a total set of rules for how everybody matches every pattern once everything goes helter skelter, and uh, that happens on occasion. Um, we work on it. We worked on it this week, um, but I think when the defensive line can control the quarterback, um, that is very very helpful. Um, if he can throw the ball on time. I think that 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 they may throw it and catch it. We may be in a position to tackle them, and hopefully they can't catch it and run with it. Um, but, well, when he extends plays, you know, it's a Johnny Manziel type of game. And, um, you know, it's very, very difficult on defensive players, and it takes a lot out of the players because they're actually just chasing the, the player two or three times longer in a play than, than a normal play. So. Um, these kind of quarterbacks, you know, can be uh, problematic uh, if you can't control them with the athleticism of your rushers. Okay. Two more, Ben and then Tony. Uh, I don't think we heard about Jamie Mosley on Monday. I haven't seen him at practice the last couple of days. Is that from the game or something else? No, he's ill. He, he's uh, he, he just sick. I mean, when he gets, when he's, you know, recovers, he'll, he'll be back out there. He doesn't have an injury. There's nothing wrong with him. Um, you know, it happens on occasion. Um, so um, hopefully he'll get well and maybe be with us tomorrow. Wrap up here with Tony. You, you mentioned the awareness that the team has to have against the Ole Miss. Have you noticed an extra juice in your players the last 
three season the last three years following that first upset in 2014? Look, um, you know, I think it's important that the team has a relative amount of, to use your term, juice uh, every week uh, that we play. Um, I, I think that every team that we play from here on out uh, if you look at the schedule, especially SEC games, uh, we can win or lose every one of those games. Uh, they're all good teams. Uh, they all have the capabilities and good players to beat, beat you. So to have the proper respect and have the right mental preparation and intensity uh, to go out there and play at a high level <coughs> and play to your standard every week is really, really important. Um, you know, last year they beat us two years in a row and we go over there and get behind 24-7. So if we had extra intensity, it didn't do us any good. Um, now, you know, perseverance the team showed in coming back in a game and winning the game was, was the resilience was, resiliency was phenomenal, right? And great competitors to be able to do that in the game. Um, but we're gonna need to play this game at a high level and a high standard like every other game that we play. And, um, you know, it comes from preparation and how you practice and understanding what you have to do to do your job and uh, doing it at a high level on a consistent basis. And that's what we'll focus on. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.